friends, welcome to the Jazz Ranch, Hip Cats Groovy Chicks. I'm going to be talking to you tonight about how to convert from the block chord technique to the spread voicing technique in playing popular and jazz piano. Now, the spread voicing is a more professional sounding technique because it spreads the harmonies between the two hands rather than all, them all being in a block position, root third, fifth, and seventh in the left hand with the melody in the right. Now you're going to be playing just the root and seventh in the left hand and the third and the melody in the right hand or spreading it out with the root and the tenth in the left hand and then the seventh and the melody note and color tones in the right hand. So you're going to be getting a bigger sound, a more professional sound. I'm going to show you how to do this in this video. It's very easy and it's a better sound. So here we go with the spread voicing. Welcome to the Jazz Ranch Studio. I'm going to be talking about how to convert the block chord technique to the spread voicing technique. Now the spread voicing is something you want to learn to get a more professional sound on the piano, particularly with popular music and jazz. Now, you probably started out learning block chords, which is the way you should learn. In other words, to play chords position in blocks, building root 3rd, 5th, 7th, root 3rd, 5th, 7th, and then using inversions like this, the 2, 5, 1, so that's the root position to the 2nd inversion, root position G minor 7, 2nd inversion C7, root position F major 7. We're going to be playing the song When Sunny Gets Blue in the Key of F. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit of what it sounds like if you play just the block chord technique and then show you how to convert that to the spread voicing technique, which is going to sound a lot better. So the block chord technique is going to sound like this. I'm just going to be playing block chords in the left hand and melody in the right. notices it sounds not so good right it's these chords are just too bundled up in the lower register below middle C now they're too muddy sounding when they get up here on the bridge they sound a little better and the bridge is this they sound better in that register so what you want to do is you want to convert this to the spread voicing. Now I'm going to show you what this looks like in my book after I explain it, but basically what's happening is this. First chord is G minor 7. We're going to play just the notes on the outside of the chord, in other words the bottom note and the top note, which are the G and the F. And then we're going to take the two middle notes, the B flat and the D, and put them in the right hand. So they're up here two bottom notes are in the left hand. So what you have is a 1-7 configuration. That 7 is a minor 7 or a flat 7 for the minor 7 chord. So you have, what you have is sort of a shell figure in the left hand and then you have the missing harmonies in the right hand. So you have the third and the fifth in the, in the right hand with the melody note. So you have tap it play it that way because of my bent finger, but that's the idea of it. Okay, so I can play it like this. Just I can just play with three, well actually three notes and the melody note. In other words, the melody note, the bass note, the third and the seventh would sound like this. The melody note, bass note, third in the right hand, seventh in the left hand, and you have this. You have everything you need. There you have root seventh, third, which is the melody note. Now here, melody note, 
bass note, which is the root. Third here, which is the D flat. Flat seven there. So you have everything you need if you have the melody note, the root or bass note, the third, and the seventh. If you have those four notes in the chord, it's spread out now over two octaves rather than bundled up in one octave down here and you're getting a much cleaner, more modern sound, a better sound. And that's what the spread voicing will give you. So let's hear the spread voicing now. And then I can, can add something there in the right hand, a flat nine. The spread voicing enables me to add color tones in the right hand and also to add little filler notes, you know, like I did here where I went. And also I can play bass notes now in the, in the left hand because the left hand is much more free. I'm not playing all these block chords. I'm playing, you know, just the root and the seventh. So. Uh, to the root and the third. So what I'm doing now is when I move in a stepwise movement, I keep the same configuration in the left hand. If I'm playing 1-7, I go to 1-7 for the next chord, then 1-7 for the next chord. But then when I play cyclically, like I'm playing B flat now, B flat minor 7 to E flat, I move to the third on the E flat chord, the root and third. So it becomes 1-7, one, 1-3. One, so, this is really the 1713 technique, and I have an exercise for that which takes you around the cycle of this, like this. exercise. It's a nice drill to apply the 1713 technique and to use this in your spread voicings. Now when we get to the bridge, what sounds best there is to reverse the 1713 and go 1317. But even better than 13 is 110. It's going to give you a bigger sound, but it's the same thing as 13. If it was 13 it would sound like this. I put the uh, tenth then, I have this. Then I go to one seven here. One seven, one ten. See, now you can look, you want to follow along with the score that you can download from my website. So then, then I can go to one seven here. One seven. 110, 110, 17, then 17, 1, 110. You see, so depending on the range where you're playing the notes, either you're going to use the 17 to the 13, or you're going to use the 110 to the 17, or 13 to 17. So you want to check out my exercise, you want to look here, we're going to show you the thing in my book, the pages in my book that explain this in detail. So if you're interested in learning more about this technique, you can learn this from my book directly, how to use it. So now let's take a look at the book, and after that we'll have a sign off. Here's a quick look into my book, you can see it's laid out in a three ring binder. It's large format, it's very practical, easy to read, 
and it lies flat on the music stand. You can take pages out to copy them very easily. You can't do that with most music books. Now here in chapter 15 of book 1 you have spread voicings. And it shows the block chords in scale tone sevenths and how they would be played in the two hands spread out. And then you have examples here in tunes. And then here you show it shows where they are spread out between the root and seventh in the left hand and the third and the fifth in the right hand through the scale tone sevenths and how it would be applied in a, in a tune. Then you get a song to play which utilizes the technique. Now it's a, here is a breakdown of how to convert from the block chords to the spread voicings in detail. And then you have more examples and more tunes to learn using the spread voicing. So it's very practical. Okay, signing off from the Jazz Ranch. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. This was a short one. You can go to my book and learn more about this and I have many videos on spread voicings. Just go to my playlist on my channel page and go to spread voicings. You'll see examples of many tunes that use the spread voicing and this more professional sound. So I hope you learned something from this. Please write to me. I love to hear from you. I always answer all my comments if you give me enough time. And until next time, I'll say in the words of my great friend upstairs, Hermie Dressel, swing loose. And we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.